Hi everyone and welcome back to my living room. My AC Wi-Fi module died and I was no longer able to communicate with the AC through Wi-Fi. So with just a few simple parts, I made a device that can connect the AC to Home Assistant again and have it controlled. The AC is made by GRI and it's about seven years old now. It is equipped with the Wi-Fi module, but unfortunately, because of some update or something else, the module no longer works. And even though I tried multiple times to reset the module and reset the AC and reset the Wi-Fi settings, nothing seems to work and the device is completely offline. And no matter what I tried, the device in the GRI app stayed offline even though I tried multiple times resetting and adding it back inside, but that didn't help. Now with this new addition, I'm still able to control the AC with its settings without needing Wi-Fi. And for that, I use this small little device that I have here on a shelf inside my living room that is actually communicating with the AC through infrared. Now the final device that I end up building is this one here that we're gonna package shortly. But before that, I want to tell you how I got to this place and how I first built three different prototypes because I had three different ideas. And before going into the details for any prototype work, I wanna thank today's sponsor, which is PCBWay, which is awesome when you want to build your own products and get your PCBs ordered. PCBWay can handle everything you might need for bringing electronics from concept to reality. If you're prototyping or manufacturing, PCBWay offers full feature custom PCB fabrication from one layer boards all the way up to complex 64 layers HDI boards. They also support flex, rigid flex, aluminum and metal core PCBs, high frequency boards and thick copper boards. On the assembly side, they do SMT, through hole, BGA and QFN, where you send your bone files and they'll handle component sourcing, assembly and testing. But wait, there is more. PCBWay does CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and injection molding, functioning as a one-stop shop for all your hardware needs. They have lead times from as fast as 24 hours for simple PCBs and they'll provide full support through the entire process until you get your final parts. Right now, their mascot contest and their 8 design contest are still open if you want to submit your designs and earn rewards. So, if you are building anything from a hobby project, startup hardware or some special edition gear, PCBWay is where you can manufacture everything under one roof. Check out the link in the video description for a welcome bonus and thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now, if you're a subscriber to the channel, you've probably seen me do this before when I did backup of my audio system remote uh, that you can check over here in the top corner, the video for it. And what this is, is an old MCU that's connected to an infrared receiver that we can use to get the codes out of the remote so we can have them for later use. Let me show you that. This node MCU is running an example sketch from the IR remote library in Arduino that we can use to get the codes from any remotes like this one here. So for example, if I press on one, you'll see that we get the protocol, the address and the actual command that we set. and the thing is that with this type of remote, whatever we press, we're going to have the same commands all the time, uh, including some of the repeats command. But now if I press on number two, we're going to have different command. But if I press on number one, it's going to have the same command from the four. And that's when I figure out that the remote that I have for the air conditioning is not actually sending that same command because you can see it sends a bit of a different data each time that we send it over. The repeat is not really exact as with the other remote. You could see that there is a variation in the data, but still there are a few commands that we can choose to get and send. Uh, but at this point, I realized that it I would be better off if I do this with um, ESP Home since ESP Home has the support to send and receive data through IR. Now this one, as you can see, already contains an infrared uh, transmitter as well as the receiver. And I flashed with the ESP Home using the appropriate remote receiver and the remote transmitter sections. And if we go in and take a look at the code, we can see the configuration for the remote receiver. This is connected to pin D5. And I've used inverted to try and get the right data with the input pull-up. And I'm just outputting the row bytes and I have a remote transmitter 
on pin D7 that with the duty percent of 50%. And you can see here that I tried to add a few buttons that I can trigger to re-emit some of the commands that I was able to get with the receiver. And if we go to look at the logs of the device, if I press on the remote button, you could see that these are the codes that we are actually receiving from the remote. And this is where the variation started and I wasn't really able to send exactly the same data. And when I tried to press on the button, this didn't really work out. So I dig deeper into the documentation and this is where I found out about the IR climate control component. But before I tested that directly, I was kind of suspecting that probably the ESP8266 was maybe not fast enough to send the right ER codes from Home Assistant to the AC. So I did exactly the same version, but with an ESP32, again, with no success because the codes that I was sending was not registered on the actual AC. And that is exactly when I stumbled upon the ER remote climate component that works through ER and uh, luckily my version of the unit was supported and the protocol was supported. You can see here that depending on what model you have, it may use a different protocol. So you need to go in and check. Mine was using the Yak 1FB9. And the way I did that and uh, is through trial and error. I started with the generic and went through the configuration until I found that this one works. Now let me show you the code for the device. And for this device, I still use the ESP32, but I configured it. So I added the remote trans transmitter now on pin 70, again with the 50% duty cycle. And then the working horse here is the climate component with the GRI because that's the AC that I have. Uh, there is a sensor component to it named living room temperature that I've added to the same configuration. And this uses the Zigbee sensor that I have from my temperature and humidity monitor inside the living room. This is uh, what I have here. And this is just used when you have the component to display the current temperature that is set in the room. Uh, you just need the entity ID uh, and you connect it to the climate component. And finally, this is the model of the protocol that you need to figure out. If the uh, provided one here does not work directly for you, then you can try all of the options that you have here and they might be different for the different type of air conditioning that you have. In my case, there are several and it turned out that the Yak 1FB9 is the one that uh, works properly on uh, my AC. And with that, I already had a device where I could reliably control the AC through ER using Home Assistant. But if you go and see here, unfortunately for my control, this component does not support the receiver. In case it does, then you can have the receiver diode as well inside the device that will get the codes from the remote and synchronize the output on the component based on what you also press on the remote. So you could instruct a command through Home Assistant, change it through the remote, and then this infrared diode will get that change and update the UI of the components. Unfortunately for mine, it does not work. So I'll have to do without it. And this is when I came to the conclusion that probably an ESP32 is an overkill for the entire project. And I remember that I have a bunch of this ESP01 modules. Now what this is, is the minimal version of the ESP8266 microcontroller that comes in this small factor with the built-in antenna and a double row header. We only have a few of the IO pins connected on the outside and it's very usable for minimal projects where we don't actually need a lot of input and output and it can be easily put inside an enclosure. And to program these, you will need a serial connector like this, or you can use it through any USB to serial, but this one is already adjusted. So you can just plug the ESP01 in 
and now you can plug it into your computer to program it either with Arduino or to flash ESP home on it. In order to put the ESP into the right programming mode, you need to jump the connections between ground and IO zero, I think it's there, yes. So I've added this switch on the back that when you plug this in, uh, to boot it into programming mode, you just need to press this in, plug it into the USB, and then it will work as expected, and you can flash the new firmware. For resetting it, then you need to unplug it and plug it back in, and that will boot it into working mode. Wherever you flashed, it will start operating. Now, the one thing that lacks on these boards is the voltage regulator, so you will need to supply directly with 3.3 volts. I don't have any power adapters that uh, supply 3.3, but I do have a bunch that supply 5 volts, so I've added this DC to DC step down converter that accepts the 5 volt and it's being currently set to output 3.3 volts. I did this small PCB on the bottom that can plug the two devices. So this is just to make all the connections and we can plug in the module and the converter. This is where we're gonna connect the five volts and here on the bottom, this is the infrared emitter diode that I connected between ground and um, IO3. So the final code for the device looks like this. For start, we need to set the right version of the ESP module. In this case, we're using the zero one and if we go down to the actual remote transmitter, it is now connected to GPIO3 instead of what we had before for the ESP32. Again, with the same duty cycle, I'm using the same sensor from the Zigbee device that I have and everything else regarding the climate control is the same. So now we are ready to put this into enclosure because that's a decisive factor that we want to have when we are building something for the living room, when it's gonna be visible, we need to have something nice. So I 3D printed this case. The case is just a simple box that I designed in, in Fusion that allows for all of the uh, electronics to sit well inside. There is a hole on one side for the five millimeter infrared emitter diode and a hole on the other side that will allow us to get the cable out and connect it to the power adapter and a suitable cover that will then close everything in. I probably could have used a little less wire for the emitter, but I wanted to have this flexible enough. So let's add this through the hole. Now this is a bit tight because it's ex exactly five millimeter hole for a five millimeter diode, uh, but we'll manage it. And that goes through. We can have the wire down below and we can press it a bit like so. Let's try and fit the other two wires on the outside. And we could we can press it in with the cover. Okay, there's some springiness to the wires. Yeah, I'm gonna actually reprint another cover so it fits better in the case. Okay, so the new cover is ready and let's see how that fits. And that now fits perfect and it's securely in there, if we want, we can also remove it. So I have to slightly adjust the tolerance on the lip here and I made it slightly larger now. To power the device, I'm gonna use just a regular five volt power brick that I had in my scrap pile. And I'm gonna solder the wires directly to it. Lastly, let's just make sure that these connections are isolated. And let's go install the device. And to mount the transmitter, I use this shelf that I have here in the corner of the room that is connected with the power brick that's uh, plugged down back into the behind of this bar. So it's kind of hidden and just across the room, we have the AC that is 
connected and looking directly at the transmitter. The transmitter itself is kind of hidden, so it's out of the way, and unless you specifically know that it's there, it's hardly visible, so this makes it really nice and out of the way for everyday living here in the living room. And just like that, I'm once again able to control the AC without spending money on a new module and without actually trying to do any work on the AC itself. Everything is controlled from the module that is across the room there and it's connected to Home Assistant. With that, I want to thank you for watching this video. If you like it, then be sure to hit that like button below. Make sure to subscribe so you see me do more projects in the future. YouTube thinks that you're going to like this video next and I'm going to see you all in the next one. Cheers!